again, you, you have been so out, out, such a leader in so many areas, but particularly, let me ask you, I want to get to another subject or two in just a second, but tell the viewers uh, just a little bit, if you can, in a short period of time, the history of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve came into existence in 1913. Uh, there was a banking crisis in 1907. And people say, well, we were on the gold standard. Why did that happen? Well, because the gold standard wasn't always followed. There was a lot of inflation, which means to me a lot of credit is created excessively. There were national banks that created this credit, and there would be bank runs, but they were usually short-lived. And yet they used that as the excuse to say, mm -hmm. we have to have a lender of last resort, which means when there are bad investments, uh, the taxpayers get bailed out because the government comes in, which is the taxpayers, and right. they bail out all the people. And this is what's happening now. Just think of all this money that we've appropriated. Uh, right. We're bailing out the rich, and they're going away with huge bonuses, and the taxpayers right. are gonna, getting stuck. So that was the reason they came in. It was to be the lender of last resort, and uh, they wanted a uh, flexible uh, st currency. One of the gold standards is not flexible. It's rather rigid. You just don't create money out of thin air. And gold standard holds people in check so it was the the purpose was was to undermine the restraints placed on government uh, which was the gold standard to allow government to print print endlessly that didn't happen immediately you know it, in the 30s when they got into trouble then they confiscated the gold and then after 44 they went to a, a dollar exchange standard in 1971 there was no gold and so this bubble that we have uh, developed is the fact that the Federal Reserve over all those years got more and more power my fear is that they're finally going to admit that this system doesn't work anymore and that there's going to be they've rejected the system that they're going to go to an international system something under the united nations under the imf and the world bank because they want to internationalize all regulations that means we lose the restraint of gold we lose the restraints of free market and we lose our sovereignty uh, this does not mean that we should be opposed to cooperating and trading and being friends with people it's right. that is a voluntary internationalism but what they're working for is international control through the finances because the dollar standard is wiped out. That's what the message is today. From 71 until now, we've had just a dollar standard. We got to print the money, right. spend endlessly, live way beyond our means, and now we're suffering the consequences. So now, I believe the plans are being laid that there will be an international paper standard, which means all the power is going to leave the United States and go to some international organization, which will make our subject to, to those standards. So far, uh, we've, we've sort of had benefits we didn't deserve. Because if we right. get to print the money, that's why we were able to afford to buy all this stuff from China. Because paper money became our greatest exports. That's why our jobs, part of the reasons why our jobs left this country is because uh, if you can print money, why work? If you're the counterfeiter of the world, you know, if you and I had the printing press, we wouldn't right. have to worry about our finances that's forever. Right. And that's the way we were for a long time. Uh, this move to an international system, do you see that happening in the possibly happen in the next five, six years, or will it take longer if, if it continues to move forward? I think it'll be at least five years, uh, but the standard we have today is so in such bad shape that it might demand that something come out. They might just declare a, uh, a worldwide emergency because things aren't functioning very well right now and everything was based on the dollar. But right now there's still uh, some some support for the dollar itself, not the dollar financial system. That's all collapsed. Right. But the dollar itself, people are still buying dollars. We can still use them. Sure. But if the dollar is rejected, that interest rates start up, price inflation goes up, and people are leaving the dollar, the end of a currency can come very swiftly. Now, this downturn in the financial system came very quickly, but the end of currencies come quickly too. Once people realize there's trust in the currency right now, it's not deserved. But there's trust right. in it because we're an economic powerhouse and we have a military uh, powerhouse. But as you have studied yeah. and have expressed your concern about the burden placed on our military, that that is precarious. So if we lose that image and we lo and lose this idea that we're not the economic power and the economic power is moving east into Asia, then I'll say, hey, time to leave the dollar. That could precipitate a crisis and require that something be done next year or the year after um, because the foundation has been eroded, and that could happen. My guess is it's not going to happen for five years or so. Dr.
Paul, I, I wish we could talk for an hour because I'm always fascinated with your knowledge and, and uh, I appreciate it. I know the people watching the show do. And we've only got uh, three or four more minutes. I want to very briefly, because you're on the International Relations Committee, uh, I've got a concern, you have a concern about the President's recent announcement of 17,000 more troops going into Afghanistan. A large percentage of that are Marines from my district. Uh, we only have about two minutes. I'm going to give that full time mm -hmm. to you to talk about uh, uh, your concern and my concern, but how you, your concern. Well, th this is one issue that I really enjoy your support and cooperation because Thank we've you. talked and worked on so much, and you've been uh, a leader in this. Matter of fact, it, it was through your motivation and desire to get a, a letter written, and uh, we're you and I and others now, Republicans and Democrats, and, and you're a much harder worker than I am. You're willing to go <laughs> and, and get people to come along with this. I'm that, glad that's to because do it. you're the friendliest guy in Congress, and oh, you're able to do this. But no, it's serious business, and the, our letter is telling Obama. Just slow up. Think about this. Uh, okay. You indicated that you weren't going to do more warmongering. You were going to do less and think about bringing troops home. Uh, but even though he did admit that he thought more troops, even during the campaign, he admitted more troops should go to uh, uh, into Afghanistan. But uh, our letter merely says stop and think about it before you do it because of the ramifications, because of, of what might, uh, might happen. And I think you made the strong suggestion in the letter that said that how many other people have done this right. and, 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 it's, and it's failed? And why, why just repeat it? And, and also one of my suggestions was to point out that uh, Ben Laden actually had in his strategy plan was to suck us in, bring us over there, was he made us an easier target. And he thought for sure that what we would do is then eventually bankrupt ourselves. We used to be his ally when we were doing the same thing, bankrupting the, the, the Soviets. Russians, we right. brought them to their knees and the old um, Mujahideen now becomes the Taliban and uh, he's allies with them and we're doing exactly what and sometimes we're our own worst enemies you know and uh, this is the reason to me this is so important that we change policy of course I take a rather strong opinion about that I believe in a constitutional non-interventionist foreign policy I think we should defend this country and right now I think our troops you point this out all the time our troops are getting tired there's less defense we motivate people to want to come over here and kill us and uh, we are spending ourselves in the bankruptcy that is not the way to protect this country dr. Paul you're exactly right and and uh, I, I feel as you do we need to protect America uh, and we need to protect America by having a strong military and having a strong economy and certainly you have articulated extremely well today in the 20 minutes of this show just where America is and and you feel as I do we can rebuild America but we've got to get smart and we cannot do make the mistakes of the past. We've got to look at where we are and where the future is. And I've got probably a minute more of you. I just want to, uh, if you've got anything you'd like to say in closing. Well, I want to thank you for having me on your program. This is uh, very nice, and uh, I, I want to say that I really enjoy working with you. And, and make a point, and I hope this isn't uh, construed in any way a negative, but you've been willing to change your mind on some issues, right. which is something rather rare in, in Washington. And uh, you've seen some of the things and you've changed your opinion a bit on foreign policy. And you're leading the charge now of trying to slow up these uh, uh, troop deployments and all this. So I want to compliment you on that. That to me really gives me a lot of encouragement uh, because sometimes people get so locked in that even then they, when they know they're doing something wrong, oh, I can't change now. I've done it this way all along. But uh, I want to really tell you I appreciate that that because uh, I, I believe uh, this is the way we have a strong national defense to use a more sensible foreign policy. Dr. Paul, thank you for being on our show today. And in just a moment, Glenn Downs, my chief of staff, is going to join us for a few minutes to talk about some of the issues facing uh, the constituents in the 3rd District. Dr. Paul, thank you for your service to America. God bless you, sir. Thank you.